Today's Tips Du Jour mailbag question comes to us from Canada. Robert, do you have a method for doing a compound radius on a fingerboard that uses common Lou 3 tools? Felder from Saskatchewan, Canada. Felder, as a matter of fact, I do. Now, the first thing we're going to do is talk about what a compound radius is. A normally radiused fretboard, if there is such a thing, has just one singular radius all the way along there. Now, depending on the taste and perhaps your style of music, that will depend what size radius you have. On my acoustic guitars, for example, I like to put a 16-inch radius, sometimes a 14-inch. Now, a compound radius would have one radius here that blends into perhaps another radius here, and then perhaps a third radius here on the end. And the reason for that is the flatter radius usually goes down here, and the guys can distort the strings or the notes and do their bending and pulling up here on a flatter surface, and it's usually a little bit easier. Down here, a little tighter radius matches the natural curvature of the finger when you're doing your bar chords. So now that we've explained what it is, let me show you how to do it. So Felder, let me show you some common Lou 3 tools I use to do this. First of all, you need a fretboard. And normally I would have the fretboard already glued to the neck, which has been carved. To put the radius on there, I'm going to use radius blocks that I got from LMI. Now these come with one radius on one side and one on the other, and you can get them in a variety of different radii. I have a couple of those. I also have sticky back sandpaper that I got from LMI in various grits to put onto the sanding blocks. To check my radius, I have a radius gauge that I got from LMI. It comes with various radii, so you can check your precision once you're done. I also have a leveling bar made out of some bar stock that I got from my local Luthery Supply big box store, and I'm going to use this to blend the radii together. So I'm going to start by just putting some double stick tape on the back of my fretboard and attaching it to my bench here so I can show you how to do this in the video. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to start with a 10-inch radius in this area, blend it into a 12-inch radius, and then finish with a 14-inch radius. I have my appropriate sanding blocks here from LMI ready to go. I've got 80-grit sticky back paper on them. I'm going to start with the flattest radius, which is 14-inch, and just do the whole board. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do the whole board and then come in with your next radius, which is a little tighter, here, and then come in with your final radius, which is very tight, and do here. If you go ahead and just do the whole board, you're going to wind up doing this anyway. So you might as well just save yourself a little time and go ahead and begin to knock that down. Another way to do this, other than just radius block, is with a hand plane. If you want to come in and knock off a little bit of the edge with a hand plane to get it started, so you don't have as much elbow grease to do, you can. A word of caution, though, if you have uh, a bound fretboard, sometimes a binding would chip, sometimes the edges of the fretboard would chip. If you have inlay, you've got a lot of things to worry about. So if you don't have a lot of finesse with your hand tools, you're not used to it, just use your sanding blocks. So I'm going to start with the 14 inch, and here we go. When you do this, you don't want to wind up doing this or lean it a little heavy on one side than on the other. You want it all to be even. So you get right over the top of the board and just come down it like this. If you want to put some chalk on it, check your progress you can. I recommend pink. It helps the mid-range. I'm kidding guys. It doesn't matter what color you have. And you can already begin to see very quickly that I'm knocking off the edges here. I want to keep going until I get all the way to the middle. That usually happens right before your arm falls off. I do also recommend using a dust mask because you're going to put up a lot of dust into the air. Obviously, that's not good for your lungs, so protect your lungs. Now, as you work, you'll notice that this area, being wider, needs a little bit more attention than the narrower end. The narrower end goes much quicker. And you can see my chalk is almost gone. It's getting really close to the middle here. I'm almost ready to go here. So after spending some quality time here, I've got the fretboard completely radiused up to a 14 inch radius. I'm now going to jump over to the 12 inch and work just this area right here. Let's chalk it up again in this area. And it shouldn't take very much to just get yourself a little tighter radius right there. 
If you want to take the 12 inch all the way out into the board, you can. It's just giving you a head start because in a minute, I'm going to come in and do a 10 inch radius there. The important thing right now, though, is to blend your 12 inch into your 14 inch. And it looks like I've done that. I now can chalk up the end of the board, use my 10 inch radius side, and finish it up right here on the end. There we go. So just to check my progress, I'm going to take my LMI radius gauge, check it out here in the end. There's no daylight under there. I've got a perfectly radiused 10 inch radius on that end of the fretboard. It then bumps up into 12, and then finally back here at 14. Now, there is a problem. Using these shorter blocks like this, I don't know if I'm level. I like to keep the fretboard level. That's where this guy comes in. Notice that he is the length of the fretboard. I can do the whole fretboard at once. I want to blend the 10 inch radius into the 12 inch and the 12 inch into the 14 inch. If I just come in and go across the board, that's what I would normally do for a normal radius, not a compound radius. This one has to be a conical shape. So as I'm doing this, I'm doing it like this in the shape of a cone. And once again, I'm going to chalk it up. Make sure you use pink chalk, guys. That's the secret. Start with my 80 grit sticky back paper from LMI. And work like this. Notice I'm just running across the board like this. Maintaining that shape the conical shape that you put in there, back and forth like this, almost like you're skiing or surfing. Now, notice I had to concentrate a little bit more here. I'm already good at the ends, but I must have concentrated more in the middle, so that's a little low spot, so let's take care of that. As you're doing this, be very careful you don't roll over the edge of the fretboard. You want the edge of the fretboard to be nice and crisp now. When you come in and install your frets later, then we'll do some sanding and stuff, we'll knock that crispness off. But right now, it needs to stay crisp. Okay, all my chalk's gone away, I should be level. However, this is only with 80 grit. I want to rinse and repeat the process all the way up to about 320. That's what I like for my fretboards, maybe even 400, perhaps even 600, depending on what day of the week it is. So now I'm just gonna peel off my sticky back paper, bump the grit up to 120, and rinse and repeat. All right, here's my 120. Concentrate down here. Go into your 12 inch radius. And then finally into your 10 inch radius. Now, I've already put the radius in there. All I'm doing now is getting the sandy marks out. I also want to do that again with 120 with the leveling bar. So once I get it up to about 220, I then come in with just a regular sanding block and just hit it with that and take it as high as you want to go. If you're that kind of guy that likes to take it all the way up to 2,000 and have it shiny, then that's fine. Like I said, mine goes to 320, 400, 600, depending on what day of the week it is. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, hey, isn't he gonna screw up the radius or take it out of level just by using a small hardback sanding block and 320 grit paper? Well, as Kent Everett likes to say, you'd have to be a real idiot to screw it up at this point. 320 grit paper is not very coarse. So just run it along the fretboard like that. Blend everything together and life's good. If you want to check it with your radius gauge again, 10, 12, and 14, then you should be ready to go. And that's how you do a compound radius. So Felder in Saskatchewan, Canada, thank you very much for your question. I think now you know how to do a compound radius. If you want to take it further, go a little bit more in detail on how to do the compound radius and other aspects of electric guitar building, check out Mike Snyder's online electric guitar building course on my website. I think you'll find it very useful. And happy building.